Orthodontics for Interested Dentists. The topic today is bonding second molars and in mass retraction aided by TADS. It's not uncommon to receive a patient who has increased overjet. When you see such a patient, sometimes you decide to extract the fore and retract the anterior teeth. Traditionally, you'd use the molars as the anchorage unit. But if you're worried about anchorage, you'll use temporary anchorage devices, TADS. The big question is, should you bond the second molars if you're relying on TADS? Well, looking at that, the advantages will be to enhance anchorage. But if you're using absolute anchorage from TADS, do you really need extra anchorage from the sevens? The other advantage would be the other advantage would be to control the first molars in 3D dimension to prevent them from tipping, rolling in, moving buckily. We'll take a closer look on that in the coming slides. Now the dis disadvantages include the cost of the attachment, the time for bonding it, and maintenance when it frequently debonds during treatment. Another issue which concerns a lot of clinicians is that you increase friction of the wire since the wire needs to move through the buckle segment. Adding another unit means you have more friction. And when the wire fr has friction with the buckle segment, it tends to move these teeth distally instead of allowing the anterior teeth to move distally backwards. So to fully understand that, let's go back to biomechanics. Now the logically in biomechanics, what you would favor to understand is if you put a TAD and you put uh, an arch wire and you attach the TAD to the hook between the lateral incisor and the canine, what happens is that the wire moves up and this would increase the lingual root torque of the incisors and cause some intrusion of the incisors, which are all most favorable in treatment of class 2 division 1. But this is logical. Is this what happens in reality? Unfortunately not. This is because the teeth have a center of rotation. And this center of rotation, whether regarding retracting the anterior segment or the whole arch, is some way 8 to 10 millimeters above the cemento-enamel junction. So when you retract these teeth along the arch wire, the line of action is much lower than the center of rotation, which means you get a clockwise rotation of either the incisor teeth or the whole arch. This means that you'll end up with extrusion of the incisors and intrusion of the upper molars, creating a lateral open bite posteriorly. So to overcome that, you should pass your force through the center of rotation. And this can be done by using long crimpable hooks and highly positioned tads and attaching these to one another to create a force that is actually parallel and goes through the center of rotation or at least as close as it can get to minimize the lingual tipping of the incisors or rotation of the whole arch. But what about clinically? How does this really reflect itself in the clinical situation? Well, this depends on the wire gauge that you're using. In many cases, you have proclined incisors and you wish that during retraction, they get more uprighted. So you select a lower gauge wire not to firmly control torque. But this has a side effect. During retraction, you end up with the, uh, the forces of the elastics causing intrusion of the arch, especially in the canine region. Not only that, this ends up with the bowing of the arch. This manifests itself as lingually tipped incisors, 
distally tipped canines, measly migrated molars, so that you actually lose anchorage and not gain anchorage because the molars during their intrusion they actually move measly and all the teeth are intruded. These are the side effects of using lower gauge arch wires. But if you use heavy gauge arch wires, then heavy gauge arch wires are going to make the arch as if it's one block and therefore it's going to rotate the whole arch in a clockwise manner. And this is a case where you see there's a step between the seven and the six and I usually thought that it was extrusion of the seven and then I realized that it was not extrusion of the seven, it was actually intrusion of the six and five because of rotation of all the arch. And to control that, to treat it, you just bond the seven and bonding the seven will end up with correction of the case. But this is why you should include sevens during the treatment of these cases because if you don't, you end up with this seven and intrusion of the sixes. But you may ask, if I'm going to use a long crimpable hook and then uh, make the line of action closer to the center of rotation, then I wouldn't get that much rotation. And that's not true. As you see in this case, if you do not include the sevens, you also get intrusion of the five and six. Not as much as the previous case, but you also do. And that's because it's not just about that. If you do not bond the seven, then the seven is left stray without any control. Since there is friction in the wires and the sixes are going to move at least to some level distally, they will push the sevens backwards. And once these sevens are pushed backwards, their mesial cusp is going to move occlusally, giving the same step bend as the last vision. This also happens even if you bond the sevens. Since the sevens are the last teeth in the arch, if you distalize sixes, you also get distal tipping of the sevens, creating the step bend between the six and seven. So it has been recommended that you, during bonding, you twist the bracket of the seven to encourage the roots to move distally to counteract this effect. Well, what about the friction that we talked about in the molar region when we bond sevens? And this would cause the distalization of the molars. That was a concern. Well, you can overcome that by placing a power chain between the six and seven. This is going to place some mesial force on the six to move forward. In addition, to counteract the frictional forces to move the sixes backwards. So you end up with the sixes sitting almost in the same place, whereas the canine is going to take double action of force to move the interior teeth backwards. So as a summary, what's the take home message from this lecture? First, always bond the second molars when retracting the interior teeth or the whole arch with the aid of tads. Secondly, use long crimpable hooks and position the tads high to minimize incisor tipping and arch rotation. Thirdly, if you notice friction causing molar distalization during the retraction, then add an elastic from the molar to the hook to counteract the distalizing forces on the molars. And as always, if you like the video, feel free to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And thank you for your listening.